In the headlines, government looking to redevelop the botanic gardens and environmental concerns of residents near geothermal plant addressed. Thanks for joining us for National Focus. I'm Prisca Juliet. Stay tuned for details of the headline stories and others coming up. Welcome back. The Labour Party administration is working on plans to redevelop the Botanic Gardens into an area for enjoyment for locals and visitors alike. Speaking recently on focus on government and development, the nation's leader, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, revealed some of government's plans for turning the Botanic Gardens into a pedestrian park. He says design plans are being finalized for this project. This is why we'll be constructing the bypass Mm -hmm. So we'll be um, having the road um, from the University of West Indies there and going across um, above the um, agricultural station. And then what's going to happen? Where the where the, gates, the gate is currently on Bath Road, it will be brought in mm -hmm. further into the botanical gardens and we will allow the bypass to get out um, in that area and onto Bath Road and so forth. Um, so we are finalizing the drawings for that. And once the drawings are finalized, we will move to the commencement of the um, botanical garden. A bus stand will be built in the area to ensure the safety of children who attend school in the vicinity. Government intends to hold discussions with schools officials as well as parents of students attending these schools. The private sector will also be engaged in the redevelopment of the botanic gardens. Isaac has been in touch with a number of stakeholders on this. And the, the intention is to get some proposals from some private entity to assist with the replanting. First of all, the design yeah. of, of, of the gardens, um, taking into consideration all the historical um, associations with the gardens that has been articulated by Dr. Lennox Honey Church, and um, also assisting us with the um, planting of, mm -hmm. the, of the various trees and, and flowering plants. Um, so, so that's also on, 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 on the cards. Uh. The Honorable Minister for Urban Renewal, Joseph Isaac, says the redevelopment of the Botanic Gardens will focus on two main aspects. The aspect of creating value as a tourism product mm -hmm. and also the aspect of creating an excitement for family enjoyment. Yes. You know, so, so, so these are the two aspects of it. So we're trying to marry both of them. So we, we are looking at, I mean, we, we are not the experts in it, but our vision is... Dominica has a lot of water, a river is passing in, in Roseau, maybe we should have a water feature. Yes. We are saying also that if the family is going to enjoy it, maybe we should be looking at, I remember years ago when we were small, it had something called merry-go-wrong. Why can't they have a little swing in a little section where children can go and play? Honorable Isaac says he is interested in engaging out-of-the-box ideas to ensure that Dominica receives a product that both Dominicans and visitors can enjoy. In more news, on Monday, a meeting was held in the community of Loda to address concerns and gather input from the community as it relates to the construction of a geothermal plant in the area. Members of the surrounding communities have been reassured that measures are being put in place to reduce impacts of the development of the plant. Residents of Loda had the opportunity to discuss with the Dominica Geothermal Development Company Limited on the possible risks and effects of constructing the power plant. One of the significant findings addressed by the company is that of minor ecological effects of the area. Overall, the ecology effects are expected to be minor um, resulting from the project. Um, there will be some effects when the vegetation is cleared from the power plant or the reinjection area, um, you know, similarly there's you know, the issue of erosion um, and this could affect fish habitat, but um, the same measures, the erosion and sediment control procedures um, will reduce um, the, you know, the amount of actual um, runoff into the um, fish habitat and, um, and there's also going to be landscaping and replanting in the long term, um, which will also, you know, reduce the the erosion and, um, and changes to the water bodies. Um, and then there's not going to be, we don't anticipate any habitat loss um, on the park um, because of the distance. 
There will be periodical monitoring every six months to ensure that there are no changes in the natural habitat in the area. Ongoing monitoring will also occur in a number of areas to ensure that environmental health is maintained in the community. The areas where there's going to be ongoing monitoring, there's going to be wastewater effluent monitoring, there's going to be stormwater quality monitoring, there's going to be biodiversity monitoring, um, that's the kind of plants and um, animal species. Um, there's going to be slope stability monitoring, uh, monitoring of the geothermal features, air quality monitoring, noise, and some social surveys ongoing, in particular in regards to the people that are impacted by land acquisition. Those concerned about the impact of the air quality during construction have been reassured that there will only be minimum impact as preventative measures have been put in place to address this concern. Things like dust. Um, and so the, you know, sort of measures that we put in place to address that, there's daily watering of the site. Um, and, you know, there are also, you know, some control measures put on the actual equipment to reduce dust. Um, and then I'm sure, you know, a topic of interest to everybody um, is, is kind of the hydrogen sulfide associated with the project. Um, you know, there's obviously already naturally occurring hydrogen sulfide in the area and, um, and we've modeled the hydrogen sulfide levels associated with the project and we're, we haven't found that there'll be any anticipated health effects during operations of the project. All the levels are predicted to be well below the World Health Organization's thresholds for even observed change. The environmental impact assessment will soon be made available to the public via the company's website. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Gender disparity continues to be a main concern for the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development as the 2018 Grade 6 National Assessment has once again recorded the underachievement of males when compared to their female counterparts. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter St. Jean, says the ministry plans to continue its measures to address this concern. As a ministry, have focused our training on helping teachers to adjust teaching methods that address male underachievement. We will continue with these interventions and hope that our consistent efforts in teacher training and development will help us arrest this particular sore point. Teachers were trained recently to conduct professional development programs at their schools. This training of trainers program was held with the support of the OECS Education Support Project. This component of the GPE project continues this July and covers areas of language modeling, mathematics instruction, classroom management and planning critical thinking, and effective questioning, differentiated instructions, and multi-grade teaching. The OECS USAID Early Learners Program is focusing on improving literacy skills, and this program or project ends, this project ends in 2019. The Honorable Minister says the Ministry has also focused on building capacity within the Ministry of Education and the Faculty of Education at the Dominica State College. All this geared at continuous professional development. He further informed that 94 teachers have been trained to take up the role of literacy coordinators at their schools. We are of the hope that these interventions will empower our teachers to further improve achievement levels at the primary level. Two males were among the top five students this year. However, girls scored higher than the boys in all the subjects. In related news, Sev S. McKenzie of the Convent Preparatory School has topped the 2018 Grade 6 National Assessment. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter St. Jean, officially released the names of the top performing students at the press briefing on Wednesday. Sev S. McKenzie, 
Convent Preparatory School. Malaika E. John Charles, Dublin Primary School. Cardell J. Kazimi, Grand Bay Primary. Kalanda A. David, St. Martin Primary. And Chidi Fabian, St. Martin Primary. Congratulations to the top performers. GIS News cut up with the proud mother and her son after the announcement. She attributes her son's success to hard work and prayer. I am very emotional and I am so grateful to God for making this happen. It took a lot of preparation, prayer and preparation. Mackenzie is also the manager of the Dominica Electricity Services. She says the entire family contributed towards his success. For me, it was even more difficult having to manage a post-Maria restoration for, for Domlek. And so it really took a lot out of me to be able to do this. But the school worked very well. My, pet, my mother, my husband, we worked with him. We worked with him even when there was not... There were not classes, classes had not started. My mother was doing work with him in Point Michelle because she used to be the principal of St. Luke's School. She described her son as focused, diligent, and an avid reader. He wants to be a scientist. I studied and they did exercises. I want to attend St. Mary's Academy. Honorable St. Jean was pleased that despite the challenges of Hurricane Maria, the students were able to perform remarkably well. He said there has not been much change in the quality of the results when compared to last year. Believe you me, we were worried that the absence of the usual comfort at our schools would distract them from their studies and their teachers grappling with the stress of post Maria Dominica would be further challenged to deliver their best in the classroom. I am, however, happy to note that our concerns, though they were well rooted, have not come to bear. Instead, this year, we are witnessing similar results to what obtained in previous years. In some cases, we note improvements in performance while some of our schools continue to struggle. Honorable Saint Jean called the performance of the students a cause for celebration and praised the students for displaying their own brand of resilience. The Honorable Education Minister also commended parents and teachers for their dedication in ensuring that the children succeed. Meantime, the Dublin Primary School, which also had a student in the top five performers, topped the list of most outstanding schools this year. The school registered seven students to sit the exam, six received scholarships. I also wish to single out the top performing schools, particularly the Dublin Primary School, which has a student among the top five, and this school entered seven students, six of whom have received scholarships or bursaries. I concur with you. What a wonderful achievement for the principal, Mrs. Joseph, her staff, and the wider Dublin community. This year, 91 students were awarded scholarships and 91 were awarded bursaries. 937 students sat the exams. That's the English segment of the news. We now join Shakira Pear for the Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole. Nous sommes Shakira Pear. Sev Mackenzie had local premier convent Vini Pumye a examination pour classe 6 à Dominique. Ministre éducation honorable Peter Senja Banola ba se étudia la ki fait bien a examination pla para yo coffers media mercredi. 
a premier place is Sev Mackenzie Hot Lake or Premier Convent, a deuxième place is Malika Johnson Hot Lake or Premier Dubla, a troisième place is Kedal Kazimi Hot Lake or Premier Guabe, a quatrième place is Kelanda David Hot Lake or Premier St. Martin, et puis a second place is Chida Fabian Hot Lake or Premier St. Martin. Honorable Serge, complimenté ses étudiants là à ce succès. Yo. Ministre Éducation là, t'es bien plaisir, même si ces étudiants là t'es ni chaling après cyclone Maria, yo fait bien. Honorable Serge dit il parte ni j'ai différence à résoudre à la hot l'année passée. Ministre dit performance là ces étudiants là fait besoin de célébration, car ces étudiants là fait tout le monde voit yo bien résilient. Ministre Éducation là aussi complimenté ses teachers là et puis ses power là pour l'éducation yo pour faire certains enfants yo fait bien. En même temps là, l'école première du Blanc venait premier à toute l'école qui fait examination là. L'école là voyait sept étudiants pour faire examination là, la six tape scholarship. L'année ça là, 91 étudiants tape scholarship et puis 99 tape bursary. 937 étudiants fait examination là. À d'autres nouvelles, l'administration labor qui travaille pour redévelopper le jardin botanique et une place pour les gens pour un joué Ça, c'est le monde local et puis le monde de l'autre pays. Parole sur la sortie de la première ministre, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, pour la tête à parler à ce focus sur le gouvernement et le développement. Le premier ministre a dit que le plan là pour faire des là qu'a fait pour le projet de la finaliser. Pour faire étudier à la place de la salle bien safe, le gouvernement a bâti une place pour le monde de la place. Le secteur privé a aussi engagé à le développement du jardin botanique. Il y a trois jours de la pour la place de la place en bas programme là pour la national de la place de la place de la place de la place Tout le monde a fait possible par le ministre Santé là et puis a tapé si pour holy on trust Queen Elizabeth et puis l'école pour bon santé à la clé. Tout le monde a fait pour manager Pissadou et puis comment Pissadou a fait mon avec à Dominique. Ministre Santé, Honorable Dr. Kedip Daru dit que thème là pour tout le monde, la prévention Pissadou, c'est une manière pour baisser les gens qui sont venus avec. Pis yo ni pis a dou, se an pa epi efo la gouvelma ka mete a sou pis a dou a Dominik. Consultant ophthalmologist a mene sante Dr. Hazel Schillingford Rickett pa le kod program la pou nasyonal pis a dou epi twetma a Dominik. Rickett di i ni plis ki sek sa moun a sou laj ki pas a vwe epi kat mil ki ni yo ti problem pou vwe. Puis ça doit qu'à jouer au groupe par un monde qui avait à Dominique. Dominique c'est pour mieux payer là à Caraïbes qui commence à voir un monde qui avait passionné puis ça doit. Process ça là qu'à prendre place à l'hôpital Princess Margaret à Wozo et puis qu'à aussi prendre place à d'autres districts ou pays là. Programme Zéla qu'à faire à collaboration et puis Vision 2020 Links et puis c'est ça c'est un ces projets là qui est fini à l'année 2019. Saint Lucie, Barbade et puis Belize aussi qu'à prendre part à Twin Mala et puis Twin Mala qu'à faciliter par mon langue et puis University of the West Indies et puis système local Santé Dominique. Et puis finalement, Lady Dominic joue un épisode d'autres pays à Caraïbes là pour garder pour d'autres manières pour faire éducation plus facile pour petits enfants. Ministre éducation là lancé un programme pour l'école première. Programme ça là c'est un innovatif là programme. Innovative Lab Program Sala qui est financé par OECS et puis USAID. Ministre Education Honorable Peter Saint Jacques, ça qui fait lesson plus facile par petits affaires. Honorable Saint Jacques, ministre là, qui a produit aussi pour les teachers qui engagent un programme Sala. Programme là pour petits enfants, c'est pour faire petits étudiants limés hors classe K pour classe 3 à l'école première. Le programme est implémenté en 15 l'école à pays là. Chef éducation Melina Fontaine dit que le projet est implémenté en l'année académique 9, l'année 2018 pour l'année 2019. USAID a fait contribution pour 36 000 dollars pour faire le programme ça possible. L'école première qui ne pas un programme ça c'est Mon John, Maho, Goodwill, K 
Caleb Laura, Dodan, Castle Bruce, Lecole Premier Wesley, Penville, Benz, Newton, et puis Lecole Premier Bowie. Ça, c'est tout pour Nouvelle Acquayol. Non, moi, c'est Chaki Repair. Au revoir. The 2018 hurricane season is here, and while we cannot control Mother Nature nor the amount of tropical systems this season will see, we must prepare. The following information is designed to help you assemble your supply kit. 7 to 14 days of non-perishable goods such as canned foods, cereals, soups, energy snacks, etc. Battery-operated radio flashlights with extra batteries, a first aid kit, fill prescriptions, clothing, sanitation items, and have extra cash in hand. Remember to get all these supplies before a storm or hurricane approaches. That's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS on facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Prisca Julian. Thanks for watching.